Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to Twitter Beef Tuesday. My mishpucha, <laughs> Chrissy Andrews, joins us. Uh, he runs the South Point Hotel Casino Sportsbook here on the tip of the strip. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, thanks. Yeah. Good to see you, as always, on a Tuesday. Tuesday morning, our usual, yeah. Our usual. Now, on this particular Tuesday, you have a specific thing you wanted to talk about. Yes. Okay, yes. Let's let's go back to when this tweet came out. I guess this was, was it this weekend or right before this weekend? Uh, it's the NCAA tournament. This is from Steve Fezzik at Fezzik Sports. He says, it's the NCAA tournament. The South Point is dealing the sides minus 105, which is great. And in the parentheses, he says, unfortunately, they have barred most sharps from betting there. And then he continues, select books are dealing first half lines, second half lines with minus 115 pricing. I'd fire the book manager for gouging slash incompetence. Now, I believe the second part he was not actually referring no, to. No, no, we're guys. dealing minus yeah. one ten. Yeah. yeah, he was not dealing. He was not talking. About it. And these, this was your response, and this is in particular to that yeah. parenthetical oh, yeah. aside from Fezzik, where he said about banning sharps. You you chimed in. You said Fez, that is totally false. You in caps. That that's how I know you meant it. You <laughs> are banned. So the jet, the broader point about sharps being banned, you said that is totally false. You specifically, I'll add, are banned. Would you care to tell people why, or would you like me to? Oh, I gave him a couple of days to say why. He didn't. See, Let's say what it's not. Okay. It's not that he's so sharp. He's won so much money that we just can't handle his action here at the South. That is not the case. And there's some guys I know that, you know, Rufus texted, tweeted, I deal very fairly with him. How many guys are sharper than Rufus? Very little. Very little. Very few. Zach White. Didn't tweet, but he, he had posted a, you know, a while back. He came in, he bought one of my books. He says, would you sign my book? I said, yeah, sure. And, I, I, and I'm paraphrasing here. Zach, even though you beat me out of $100,000, I still think you're a hell of a guy, you know. That was a pretty big whack. Well, you know, I patted him on the back and say, you know, damn you, I'll get you next time. You know, mm-hmm. something like that. So I've done, and I've checked. I made sure there's one person banned. One. One. Fezzik. Let me tell you why. And a couple of people have tweeted and they've, they've guessed why. It's no, not a big secret because I've heard this not only since that tweet, but before that as well from a lot of other people in, on my side of the counter. He would come up, he had his parlay cards. Now, he's great at betting these dead numbers. You know, check out those first couple of uh, Hilton contests that he won. Mm -hmm. Those are dead numbers. Put out the parlay card, those are dead numbers. You're stuck with them. He'd come in, and usually it was Jimmy that dealt with him. Jimmy would tell him, this is what you could have. You know, and I would always say, we'll try to put them on for as much as we can handle. And, you know, we'd put them on. It was never enough. Sneak in on graveyard, send in beards, send in, you know, God knows who. I mean, it was a constant battle. He wouldn't do it. Now, let me go back in history a little bit. When I ran the Calneva, okay, and when I left Calneva in 03, we had 28 locations throughout the state of Nevada. I happen to know, because I saw the gaming figures, at Calneva, we did more parlay card business than number two, which I think was the stations, Two, three, and four combined. That's how big our parlay card handle was. So I kind of let him get away with, I don't want to say almost anything. I mean, I still had to monitor it some. But I let him take a big whack, you know, because, you know, the amount of money that we were handling every week, it wasn't worth my time to monitor, you know, and micromanage every single player. I couldn't do it in every single number. And, you know, so I kind of let it go. And I, I, would, I would guess he probably did pretty well against me. Yeah, that was just the way it goes. And I got the golden nugget after that, you know, and I, I had, you know, it was, we had one location, you know, downtown, you know, you know, I had to monitor the hell out of that, but it was the same deal. Send in beards, come in late, cut, you know, bet them early in the morning, then hope a shift change would come in and, you know, that kind of routine. And this is a pattern. And like I said, I've heard from some others, I'm not going to say who they are, that he's done throughout his career. It's never, ever enough. Finally, I told him, that's it. You can't bet here anymore. That's it. Now, do I think he's still sending in beards and doing all that stuff? Yeah. I mean, I'm not stupid. You know, yeah. Well, okay. So let me, let me step in here. Go ahead. I, I want to, 
I want to give him a as a but let, before let me yeah, do one ahead. more one sure. more statement then we'll go to you. Please. When I finally banned them, I thought my crew was going to carry me out on their shoulders to my car. <laughs> they were so happy. Is that Chrissy being carried to his car right there? Okay, so let me just say first of all, so I obviously you and I go way back here, my mishpocha for God's sakes. I like Steve very much, and and I've said on this show before, um, Steve is a is a wonderful person. I've and, dined with him. Yes. It, by the way, he likes you very much. He I, says. I enjoy his company. Yeah, yeah. he's a he's, and he's a, a very smart guy. And, and, and absolutely. A, and you would even concede that I was going to get to that. You would concede a very a very smart better. Oh, yes. And with no, that is not the issue. That is not the issue at all. So, um, but I've said to him, and I said this on the show. I've said to to Steve in, in person. I've said, Steve, you're this wonderfully nice guy in person. I love hanging out with you. But let's just get beyond this specifically. But I go on Twitter. Like, you feel the need to always point out when you're right and when others are wrong. I go, why do you do that? And I must tell you that it, almost sheepishly, almost adorably, he <laughs> said to me, he goes, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, he can, know. so to your point about, you know, he, he has the compulsion to do that. He even admits that he sort of can't help himself in doing that. Now, specifically to your point about why you have banned him. And, and I get it that you, what you objected to here is that the impression that he gave on Twitter is that... He was lumping himself into all of all of us sharps get banned, and you're objecting to the point no. that one that's not even well, true. And I have and something certain, else to say, but okay. go ahead. All right. His his position on this would be that that stuff about the beards and and circumventing and figuring other ways to bet lots of stuff. That yes, he used to do that, right? That he used to do that many many years ago, but that he has since disbanded that kind of practice many many years ago, and. The last time he was able to bet the parlay cards, and we'll get into it because I want to ask you specifically broader questions yeah, about— have more to say. Okay, yeah, we we'll, we got a couple segments here because I want to ask you specifically more about parlay cards in general and the app versus, versus uh, bricks and mortar here. But his position is that the last time he was able to bet here, he actually wasn't taking any shots and had not been for a long time. In fact, that he— you know, like we were talking about the Rabakana and Sabalenka, how we like we bet once and then we we waited five minutes, we bet again. We weren't trying to be pigs with a tennis bet last week. In the same way with the parlay cards, he's going up with max five or ten. He's using his ID card here, so he's not by definition trying to, you know, conceal his identity. He's in fact bringing his card to the table, and he does. He did say that I think it was when you were sick. And I, I'm not trying to throw Jimmy under the bus, but, you know, Jimmy, you know how Jimmy is. Jimmy's sort of like, eh, yeah, go ahead, just take it easy, kid, right? Like, you know, yeah. Jimmy's very broad sure. like that. And so his position is he really wasn't taking any shots. He understands your position, and that was the last time that he did it, and he, and he was being really above board about it. Uh, I'd have to look at the specifics of that. I don't yeah. recall that. Uh, that, just just that to present both sides. I don't. I don't recall that. Yeah. But you know, I know we we're short on time here. I got a couple things to say more about that. But yeah. very quickly, I would say this. I don't know if I'm going to have enough time. Uh, let's go on to something because I need I need about two minutes. Okay. Because I got two more points to make. We'll but resume I'm gonna this. Need a little yeah, more yeah. Than, than what we have a lot. No, I here. think it's a I think it's a good case study because people. And I said it before you came on. I go, just by definition, there's a lot of people out there. Because Just because you're the bookmaker, 90%, you know, they're already like, oh, Chrissy's wrong, right? There's going to be that well, segment you, that listens. You, you have to understand, I work for the South Point. Yeah. My job is to make money for the South Point. That's my job. Let's resume this. Chrissy has more to say. I also want to ask some questions just beyond the Fezzik case study about parlay cards in general and, and South Point policies. It's a numbers game at Visa, the sports betting network. Skill Alexander, Chrissy Andrews, who runs the uh, South Point Hotel Casino Sports Book here as well. My Mishbucha, author, then one day, then one year. Adele Fusmu, my brother. Yep. More books to come. More books coming. More books to come. And oh, by the way, runs the South Point uh, Sports Book. We get tweets, by the way. This is from, uh, I just want to read a couple. J&J Watering Hole. The truth has come out on air. Good for you, Chrissy and Gil, for giving Chris the airtime to respond. A grand total of one person is banned from South Point, and that's the real truth. Uh, by the way, for those just tuning in, um, you know, by the way, someone else just tweeted. They go, God, what, is the, what was the, uh, the gossipy thing? Oh, gossipy, gossipy Gary. Gossipy Gary time, Tom F. Um, so this is, we were, we're joking, it's, it's uh, Twitter Beef Tuesday. But it was Steve Fezzik, um, who I like very much and is a super sharp better. 
um, and I have conversations with uh, about betting and beyond. And it's, uh, you know, he had a tweet that we put up this week from this weekend or during the March Madness anyway, where he made a comment, you know, in, in a parenthetical aside, and it was saying that the sharp, that the South Point bans sharp betters, and you wanted to set the record straight because you had kind of had enough of this, and you said, I'm going to set the record I've straight. I've let it go for a long time. You have. You wanted to say something else, and then I'll chime back in. No, I got a couple things. You know, when you do put out parlay cards, what's, it's a dead number. All you can do, me as a bookmaker, all I could do is manage the risk. That's all I could do. Can't move numbers, can't do anything. Well, if I don't know what the risk is, how can I manage it? And if anybody, there's probably a lot of guys out there deal with Wall Street. I, I was in with some hedge fund guys for a while. That's the first thing they taught me. The first thing they look at is what's the risk? Now, if I don't know what the risk is, how can I manage it? I don't want to call Michael Gone on Monday morning and say, oh, by the way, we got two million riding in parlay cards, and I had no idea about it. So I just all I could do is manage the risk. And if I have a guy sneaking in parlay cards and doing this and that, I like, you know, and you say, well, you should. The way our system is, I don't know what we have. I can see the amount bet. I don't know what it's attached to or anything like that. So all I could do is monitor the bets, kind of write them down as they come in, kind of old school. And if I don't know what the risk is, I can't manage. Okay, so I'm glad you said that because realistically, because I was going to chime in on that and I'll let you go and I'll let you continue. But it, that was what leapt into my mind, which is doing parlay card business, part and parcel with doing that or inherent within that is, because there's going to be a lot of people listening who, who think this as well is, I mean, isn't that part of the deal, right? That you're going to, it, it is by nature, yeah. stale numbers that people want to play. Right. Right. So there's going to be some people listening who are, who are going to say, well, are you saying to us, you're, you can only play these parlay cards as long as you don't play the stale numbers? So I just no. wanted to clarify no, that we, point. Uh, listen, we know they're going to play the stale numbers. Do I say they could bet them un, with an unlimited amount? So like I said, Jeff Bezos, before he buys the your uh, Washington team, <laughs> he comes in and bets me a million dollars in round robin. Then I have to go to Mike. Oh, by the way, you're going to blow the whole joint on Monday night if uh, you know uh, the, the 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 Commanders win tonight. You know, no, I just have to know what the risk is. I didn't say you can't bet them. Of course, you could bet them. We know that's the nature of it. You know, I'm just just being thorough, no, just trying right. to no, get everybody's you, reaction to this. I, you know, yeah, yeah, that's the that's what they're going to play, mm -hmm. and I got to hope that they, you know. <laughs> that we split them out, you know, and, and, but I have to know what the risk is. You, now, you, the other point I did want to make, cause yeah. we don't have a whole lot no, of please time. Go. I went to uh, one of our friends, I, I'll tell you off camera, came to me and says, if Fezzik wanted to get back in, how could he do it? I said, let me tell you how, cause I would let him back in if he does two things. Number one, say why he's banned. Now, he doesn't have to apologize. He doesn't have to grovel, nothing like that. But just say why. It's not because he's like this ultra sharp better that he's won so much money that we can't. No. You've done that for him today. I think I've done that. <laughs> yeah. But he just has to say, that's why I was banned. Mm -hmm. And not do it again. Come in and just play like he says he is, like he does. Yeah, he, he says he's not. If he says that yeah. and does that and isn't sending in beers, and isn't sneaking in on graveyard and all that. I'd let him play again. Well, now the, my crew would probably carry me back into the joint on their shoulders, being pissed <laughs> off at me for doing that. But uh, but right. you know, I'm trying to be fair. But as well, it is, I can't manage the risk if I don't know what. It is. Well, to be fair, I, I did say to him, and, and I, Steve, I hope will appreciate that. I'm you know, I'm just being. Oh, and by the way, when he know. puts it out on Twitter or a podcast or whatever, he can't delete it 30 seconds later. Yeah. That's to stay up there. Well, that okay. So in addition to me saying to him and us and me and Steve having this honest conversation about Steve, you're so nice. Why can't you help yourself publicly? And he says, I don't know. I can't help it. Right, which is just sort of a comical response. You know, he did mention to me at one point, he says, hey, you know, why wouldn't they want, you know, my, inf you know, a sharp better like me in there? I go, yeah, but that's, I said to him, I go, that's not what we're talking about. This isn't your information is so good that they can use it. This is you just taking advantage of the parlay cards. And he goes, well, and then he tried to say, so I did have that kind of pushback on him as well. Um just to let you know that I'm, you know, I'm not playing either side here. I just want, I just want the truth to be out, and I want everybody's position to be accurately represented. What would you say? Now, we, we did have one tweet that I wanted. Yeah, and, to... you know, there's a lot of stuff for, what, that we may have to cover next week. Okay. You know, I understand that. Okay. Because you know, I know you have some points you want to bring well, just... up, and they're valid, but I, I, I don't think we're going to have enough time to address them all. Okay. I just wanted to bring up the one, which okay. you've addressed before, okay. and I just want you to, to address it. This is Ed Blust who said, I'm a big fan of Chrissy. I own two of his books, so nothing personal, just What happened cute. to the third? Okay. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, Ed. We can't read any more of this. You don't own all three. He says, can you ask Chrissy, what is the strategy of banning bettors from the mobile app, but allowing them to bet at the counter? Thanks. Okay. Michael Gaughan is very old school. He wants to create traffic here in the casino. Now, Michael Gaughan and me, uh, uh, first of all, I've known Michael since, I've known Michael since 1980. I knew his dad, Jackie, before that. You know, I'm a former casino owner. So Michael confides in me in some things. I, I, among the things he confides in me, I know what this place makes. Yeah. So you may disagree with some things with Michael, and, and I do. Uh, but you can't argue with the, re, the, the results of, of the bottom line of this place. And he's told me what he's been offered for this place some astronomical numbers now he doesn't want to sell because like he yeah, i think it was even in the papers you know, what am i going to do every day if i sell you know so he's you know, frank is a long time partner yeah. frank what are me and you going to go every day if i sell the joint by the way that is a very valid point it is yeah, yeah. and the, you know just very briefly i had two two guys come in last week two old casino guys 80 year old guy a 74 year old guy came in to have lunch with me so it was noon on a thursday they're walking through this i can't believe how much business this place has and that's all michael gone so there's some things I disagree with Mike on. And by the way, in, in one of those books, Ed, that you bought, then one year, there's a passage in there in a day when Michael came down on the phone accounts and, and our discussion as to that. And I was very honest with it. Michael obviously knows it's in writing. The book's dedicated to Michael. That's right. So it's right there. It is in and then it, one year, right? It, it, it is in then one year. Yeah. So it's there. I didn't hide anything. I was very honest. I showed Michael. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, okay. He didn't have any problem with it, you know. So it's out there. I don't want to keep repeating it. I also wouldn't mind selling a few more books if anybody wants to go buy. Then one year, the this sales was, this aren't was as all good as one then big one day. This is all one big ploy to get this you to sell more books. This is one big ploy, exactly. Yeah. You know, but go there, and it was before the pandemic. I can't remember the exact date, but it was somewhere before the. And, and it's a journal, so we go day by day. Yeah. You know, so it's in there uh, before the pandemic. You could read. Uh, what you know, Michael uh, took Jimmy and I aside, and uh, you know, we kind of uh, you know had a discussion about the phone accounts and you know why he wants to do that. But you know, like I said, you, you may disagree, and there's some things I disagree. Listen, you have people in your family in your life that you love and disagree with. You and I disagree yeah. on some things, yeah. you know, but that's just the way it goes. And Michael and I, you know, don't always see the eye on eye, eye to eye on things, but uh, you can go in there and read that and and see and see why. But that, listen, he's the boss. I got to do what the boss says. We uh, we all appreciate you you spending the time. So there is a way for Steve back in if he wants. I I, I don't know if that friend of ours. Yeah. And I'll tell you who it is off camera. Yeah. I don't know if he ever reached out to him or not. But those are the deals. Like okay. I said, you got to say why. Can't delete it. Leave it up there and don't do it again. And Steve is welcome on this show whenever I've never he wants. You, he, you, you've had him on your show many times. Many, many times. Yeah. He's very smart. He's very entertaining. I've never interfered. He, and, I've never said a word. Yeah. You want to have him on? Have him on. He's on with Patrick and Amal every Monday. That's yeah. Patrick's guy also. They have a long-standing relationship. Yeah, no, so. he's very good on yeah. VSIN for sure. Yeah. Oh, easy. People can learn as much from Steve Fezzik as they can from anyone. He's a smart, smart guy. I don't deny that one bit. Chrissy, thank you as always. Sure. At Andrews Sports for all the books if you want to buy if you want to buy the books as well. <laughs> yeah, whatever the third end. <laughs> Andrews Sports, uh, Amazon, and you can get the link over on his Twitter. Visit Veasan.com to get current odds. Listen for free. Find showtimes and download Veasan Sports Betting Podcasts.